All right, everybody, welcome back to the Millennial Sales Podcast. This is your host, Tommy Tahoe Alemo. It's episode 236. Happy Monday to you. Uh, this is the show where young salespeople come to learn about the sales craft, to make more money, to sell more deals, to get promoted, to be more fulfilled, to find the next job, whatever it is that you're trying to get out of this journey. We're on the path together uh, to get there. Um, super pumped. Also super tired. <laughs> uh, last full week of the quarter here, uh, as we're talking, we've got about you know nine, 10 days left. If you're on the calendar cycle like me, the calendar's packed. The fingers are crossed uh, to try to get as many deals in as possible. And hopefully the sales gods are with you. Um, one quick note before we get to the sponsors and then we get to the content for today. Uh, I'm doing a cool thing with uh, our friends over at Dooley. Put out a LinkedIn post last Thursday, essentially uh, asking for your best end of quarter sales story. Good, bad, ugly, funny, stupid, whatever it is, the most interesting story that you have. Uh, the winner, uh, as voted on by their peers, gets either uh, gets both uh, free access to Dooley, which is a really cool new sales tool, as well as a guest spot on this podcast, which is pretty cool as well. So uh, you can head over to me on LinkedIn uh, to learn more about that. Always hit me up on social media. I'm Tommy Tahoe on Twitter and Instagram as well. So uh, let's get to a quick word to our sponsors. First up, we got Gong, gong.io. Um, the number one revenue intelligence platform. It is the best sales invention in the history of sales inventions. Um, I work there now because I love it so much. Uh, it's it's changing the game, uh, no doubt about it. We closed uh, another 250 million in funding a couple of weeks ago, which is pretty wild and just crazy demand coming in. Uh, amazing to see what our customers are doing um, and helping turn them into raving fans, which is what I do there. So uh, check us out. Gong.io, if you haven't heard of us, uh, you can also DM me on LinkedIn and I'll point you in the right direction if you'd like. The other sponsor that I want to shout out is Postal.io. So Postal helps when you're trying to send things to customers or prospects or partners to really make it a customized, meaningful experience. Uh, so instead of just mass blasting, you can send something from the local brewery or florist or something like that. Super cool as well. I use that to send gifts to uh, some of my customers and prospects. So you can check them out at postal.io and the offer that they have here just for June. So only the last like 10 days here. Uh, if you leave a review for this podcast on Apple and send that to me on LinkedIn, um, they'll give you a free Starbucks gift card, which is pretty sweet. Um, so it should only take you about a minute to do. You get yourself a nice cappuccino or whatever it is that you want. Uh, you can support both of them, gong.io and postal.io. So show some love to the sponsors. Um, again, subscribe to this show, review it, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, follow me on social media. That's the way that you can really help support this show, um, putting in the time and trying to add value to you all. So uh, without further ado, let's get to today's content. I've got Tori Scott. Uh, Tori is a key business development rep uh, for MVF. She was nominated for this show uh, as someone that uh, someone thought that she was one of the best salespeople that they knew. Um, I take that recommendation very highly, uh, and we talk about uh, building long-term relationships uh, with customers. We get into how she does that, um, and also on the flip side, away from sales, she spends a lot of time in the outdoors and hiking and doing all that stuff, um, and how that just kind of helps her mentally. Um, I could speak also to that firsthand. The more, out, the more I get outside, if it's a hike, if it's a run, even if it's just a walk, um, clears my mind, and... I saw something from Dave Gerhardt, who's a, you know, you might know him as the CMO at Privy. He was formerly at Drift. And in his newsletter last week, he wrote about how taking a walk was like his marketing hack. Every, every day he takes an hour long walk, no headphones, no podcast, none of that. He just observes things and thinks and gets great ideas. And I've been doing that and I can vouch to it. So um, let's get straight into it. We're going to talk about building long-term relationships. We're going to talk about uh, getting outside, a whole bunch of other things. Let's get straight to it with Tori Scott. Let's go. All right, Tori Scott, welcome to Millennial Sales. How are we doing? Thank you, Tom. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Excited to uh, to have this conversation. And um, I've got to ask, I love 
my new thing, just because we're all remote and, and all, you know, COVID with everything, the back, people's backgrounds, I'm so interested by them. So you've got like a, like a bull head or something like on the wall. Is that like a hunting type thing? Like, what do we got going on there? No, I'm actually not a hunter. Um, that was my, my partner's choice of, I didn't want it in the bedroom. So here it, it made it to the <laughs> guest room. Um, you can also actually see my, that's a picture of my dog in colonial clothing um, behind me, which is probably not the most professional thing, but it has, you know, started up some good conversations with, with clients um, on Zoom calls. So. That's hilarious. Is that something that you do? Like, that's like your Christmas card you send out every year or like what, <laughs> what, what prompted that? Um, no, it was actually a, a gift for my coworkers. My dog used to, to come into the office pretty frequently before I was remote. And it was more of a, a gag gift of, hey, you love your dog. This is, this is funny. Um, here's your going away or, you know, moving out of the state gift. Um, so figured I had to hang it up, of course. That's hilarious. Our, um, this is so random, but our VP of sales, he does like the blurred background on Zoom, you know, where like you can't see mm -hmm. anything. And one time we were doing a forecast call with the whole sale, like whole company sales team and he forgot to take it off and his dog, like it was like a portrait of his dog, this massive thing in his bedroom is like 20 by 24 uh, with like his dog with a crown on or something like that was in the background. Um, and he's like, that's why I blur it out. So we've all, we've all got our strange things that, that we've I, Yeah, I understand uh, what you, why, why did that choice. That's unreal. Um, and so uh, it looks like via LinkedIn that you are, uh, even if you're not a hunter, pretty active, like outdoors, like, you know, hiking and, and I don't know if you climb or just like different things like that down in uh, Southern California. Yes, um, definitely enjoy the outdoors if I'm not, you know, at work um, right here at this desk or making calls. I normally am either hiking. We live in a pretty outdoorsy area. So how I spend most of my afternoons um, is on a nice long hike or I'm trying to pick up surfing. I'm not very good. Um, I wouldn't re recommend me teaching anyone or, or coming to watch, but it is definitely a, a pastime that I enjoy. There's something about, I got to ask, do you, when you go for like that afternoon hike, is that like a cut in between your day or is that how you end the work day? Uh, how do you, how do you structure that in? It normally depends on how my, my client calls are stacked up. I yeah. would prefer it to be my lunchtime activity. I'm in the, some say it's lucky, some say it's unlucky situation where if I, I don't have great cell service at my place. So if I'm not connected to Wi-Fi or in the house, I don't normally get messages, which is sometimes the, the perfect refresher that I need. And sometimes it's a, oh, I've missed three calls from a, an important client. I need to, to get back home and call them back now. Um, but normally I prefer it to be in the middle of the day, a nice refresh. There's a lot going on, especially when you're talking to multiple clients, running multiple proposal or sales calls. So having that full kind of break, I think, allows me to come back and be ready to, to go again in the afternoon instead of kind of going back to back to back um, yeah. and not being able to, to fully give each call the attention that I think is needed. Yeah, I feel the same way. I like to do some sort of breakup, like middle, uh, maybe not lunch, maybe a little bit later, maybe like two or three. And it's kind of like that good middle of the day breakup um, and just allows you to kind of come back at it uh, more fresh. And I think a lot of people are probably jealous that you're not getting those met like in the, in the time period now where we're just, we're not even working from home. We're just living at work. It's yeah. like to have that, you know, built in like lack of Wi-Fi buffer is, is kind of nice. I imagine. It is. It's definitely something that I, at first was frustrated about when we, when I first moved here and now I'm kind of like, this is a great way for me to enforce a little bit of a screen break for myself um, and just take some time to myself. So agreed. That's awesome. Um, so it looks like you're doing key business development uh, as your role right now. Maybe you could just like educate me for 20 seconds on what exactly that means and, and what your role looks like right now. Yeah, of course. It's kind of a funky title, um, yeah. won't lie, but essentially I am in full cycle sales. So um, we do like we, our company has just kind of recently added the SDR team um, as a part of our business. However, before then I've, you know, I'm responsible for bringing my own business on. 
um, having, a, so I have a new business target. And then I also manage all of the accounts that I bring on, right? Mm -hmm. So if I sell to them, I am there essentially kind of, we I'm work for a marketing um, agency and a lead generation company. So I essentially will manage that relationship for the lifetime that they're with, um, with MBF or with our company. So looking for, it's kind of, you know, it's not always focused on new business, but it is always focused on closing, I like to say, because it's always, yeah. how can I either expand my current accounts, right? Work with them on other areas of the business that maybe we can run campaigns for or different countries they're looking to, to move into. Um, so kind of always looking for ways to help them generate more leads um, yeah. while increasing uh, kind of our partnership. Yep. And that's, that's the world that uh, I've spent most of my career in is like you, you bring on the account and then you don't pass it. It's like you, you maintain the relationship and you try to, you know, you work on the renewal and the upsell and try to grow the account. And so uh, with that, like one thing that you mentioned offline was just, you know, really putting a heavy focus on the relationships that you build with your clients and you have to play the long game. Right. And, and not to say that in new business, you can, sell the dream but that is what happens sometimes and it's mm -hmm. it is truly someone else's job to in in a lot of cases to like kind of close Same. the gap but but you're that person like you're exactly. you're selling the dream and then you're delivering the dream so talk to me a little bit about how you are building those relationships and and continuing to grow the uh, the accounts yeah of course i think exactly right in some cases it is very easy to you know over promise and under deliver. Um, I like to say that I'd rather under promise and over deliver, right? Mm -hmm. Have them, um, you know, just not be as over salesy, um, right? Because if you, if you're the one who actually does close that kind of deal, that deal, that's probably not the best fit for our organization. And you know it, they kind of know it, um, essentially just ends up taking up more of your time. It's not actually worth, worth that kind of small, smaller reward. Um, but it also allows you, like you said, it's the long game, right? There are some partners I have where they came on for a very small trial and being able to work with them and grow that account to you know, what we consider a, a very large um, partner is definitely rewarding in its own sense. But yeah. also when you work with customers like that and clients like that, what you really start to see is they trust you. Um, and it makes those harder conversations of negotiation renewal, upsells, you know, those price increases, it makes those conversations a lot easier if they actually know that you have their best interests in mind because uh, you've been working with them for a long time. It's it's kind of funny. I had a client that we went to, this is obviously pre, pre-pandemic, but yeah. we were pushing or we needed a, a price increase from them. And we flew out to visit them, you know, had a, a full day of kind of presentations, negotiations, et cetera. And at di we, we ended up coming to an agreement and at dinner, he said, you know, one of your strongest negotiation tactics is you're just nice. Like I do actually want to work with you. So I'm more willing to, to figure out a way to get creative with you. Um, and he was like, if you were just a little bit harder to work with, it would be easier to, to say no to yeah. you know, renewing for another year. Um, and I think that's really, the big part of it is if you can make it where they understand your partner actually does feel like a partner, not like you're constantly selling or trying to pull something over their eyes. Um, it makes it much easier in the long run to have those tough conversations. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like I'm curious on your take in a situation like that with, with say a renewal and there's a price increase or, you know, something that, you know, is going to be a tough conversation kind of leading with like, not, you know, I feel like the, the normal track is like, you lead with this, like, we want this like best case scenario and they want it at like these rock bottom prices. And then you're like butting heads to like maybe meet in the middle somewhere. I feel like if you just like leave a little meat on the bone, right. And you're not so greedy on that first go. And you're like, Hey, look, this is like, I've already proactively done some stuff on your behalf. Like, yeah. I think this is fair. This is why I think it's fair. Like, you might get some pushback. You might still, there might still be a negotiation, but I feel like one that builds trust and two, it just makes it easier for everyone involved. So a four week process could turn into a one week process because, 
you know, you're coming in at, at something that is actually realistic and something that, that could possibly get done. Exactly. I, I totally agree. I think framing that conversation of when you have, you know, that, that conversation is happening of, I figured that, you know, this is what my leadership is hoping for. I knew, or I assume that this may be potentially an issue for you. Um, so if I've, I've already kind of gone back to them and, and fought to get this, you know, discount or, or whatnot, and really laying it on the table right there from the beginning, instead of coming in and be like, this is the price, no matter yeah. what, right? Because we all know that's not the first price out is the door. It's right. never the, the real price. Um, so exactly. I think doing a little bit of that back end, but also addressing that you do want to meet them in the middle um, and have done some work on their behalf for you, for them. Now, what would you do in a situation? I'm going to bring you into uh, what I sometimes refer to as the selfish, selfish section where I just ask a question that I'm working on and I have smarter people try to help me out. So what do you do in a situation you're working on, a, you, you know, working with a client and, um, you know, unfortunately, maybe you're single threaded there and that contact leaves. Anyone that's working with customers has, has had that situation. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, has that happened to you? And then have you overcome that uh, in, in a helpful way? It has happened to me. It all, I feel like it's happened to everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, after being burned a couple of times, my main goal is to have as many contacts within the organization as possible. Um, yeah. So even if I do you know, get cut off, at least I have another route to, to reach out to. My thought and kind of the, the way I is almost even that blanket, like, hey, I, I'll get on LinkedIn. I'll see who may have taken over their position. And if they haven't hired for it, I'll reach out to someone who may potentially be on their team. And I'm normally just very flat out with the situation. Hey, I was at this stage with X. It seems like they have left. Can you help me out or just point me in the right direction? Um, sometimes I send a voice memo on LinkedIn. You know, I'll, I'll cold call them. Um, <laughs> to see how I can get back into that account. Sometimes it works, you know, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, but nothing's going to work every, every time. So, yeah, I mean, the key is, is really not getting in that situation by being multi-threaded. I would say yes. Um, it, it happens. Like there's always going to be certain decision makers who want to keep everything very close and very tight to their chest. And I think the more you can kind of establish trust from them, right? and hopefully yeah. get introduced to other people is the best way to avoid it happening. But I would say just reach out to anybody who may be on their team and, and, <laughs> and name drop. That's what I do. How do you, is that when, when let's just say that the contact hasn't left and, but they're kind of like blocking you a little bit, like they wanted to run, run through them. Is that, is that generally your move? You, you're just kind of prospecting outside and, and, you know, name dropping and just trying to like, get any, any touch points, any other leverage points that you can? Yeah, I like to, I mean, I will definitely do that depending on the situation. I don't want to, you know, put fire on a, on a situation that they may be trying to, to exit or leave. Right. I think one way around it is if you have a potential SDR or just someone else on your team, kind of reach out to some other people and try to gather interest that way because then it's a, oh, that was a mistake. First, like, sorry to be reaching out. I didn't know my colleague was already speaking to X versus, oh, I knew. I, like, this is me. I'm trying to go around you. Yeah. Um, I always find find that as a way. And sometimes I've had even executive leadership reach out kind of through a LinkedIn message um, or send a quick yeah. note. Hey, Tori was working with X on this. We were really excited about the partnership. Haven't heard anything. Any thoughts on connecting kind of VP to VP or exec to exec? Um, sometimes that gets the ball rolling and some, some surprisingly, they, they answer you again. So. I can't wait to be a VP someday and be able to send those emails. Just like such a power trip. It's like, uh, you can't handle it. Let me just use my title to my advantage. Oh, me, me too. Uh, <laughs> me too. But I will say, I think making sure you utilize that is, is important. Um, because yeah. most VPs don't care to do it for you. And it's an easy way to kind of get stuff deals unstuck um, or pick up the conversation. It's, hey, I have the same title as you, so I'll respond to you, even though I've kind of been putting off responding to your rep for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You got to put the ego aside for something like that. Definitely. Um, as we're wrapping up, I'm always curious, like, uh, 
resources for development. This could be sales or it could be like really any topics fair game, but I'm always curious, like what books people are, are reading, podcasts they like, you know, YouTube, who they're following on Instagram, whatever it is that you're like has impacted you or that you're, you know, into or obsessed with right now. Like I'm just, I'm all ears. What do you got? Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously your podcast is there right we, up there. There we go. Um, five, as everyone pause. <laughs> go, go give me a five-star review, everyone. <laughs> oh, there, there. Um, I think, I mean, obviously everyone reads Chris Voss, never split the mm. difference. I think, especially if you're going to kind of, as we mentioned, have those ongoing discussions with clients and being in negotiation situations frequently, I think it's a must. Um, it's helped me with simple stuff um, that I think should have been common sense to me. But looking back, I'm like, do I actually do that? Um, so it's a good reread every once in a while. And also Chris Hatfield, he is, um, I think based out of the UK, but he also does a great job of talking about mental health within mm. the, the sales role, right? Cause it's a very, you just got to get to the end of the quarter, hit your number. Um, and I think he does a really good job of during his, you know, I've done some web, like gone to some of his webinars and some of his trainings. And I think he does a great job of preaching great sales tactics, but also a great way to make sure that you're taking care of number one, like your number one yourself, right? Making sure that your mind is in the right place. So you're actually able to give full energy to your job when you're on the clock. Absolutely. And I think that kind of goes full circle with some of the stuff you were talking about, about, you know, getting outside and, and exercising. I'm curious, any other things that have been helpful for you? I think we've all experienced uh, some rough times. If, if you've been in sales long enough and just, you know, the anxiety and, uh, you know, uh, the stress that it can cause. Yeah. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm always wanting to hit quota. Like that yeah. is, definitely always the end goal. Um, and I will work really hard to get there. Um, and I think, but knowing that if you miss quota once, it's not going to be the end of the world, right? Surrounding yourself with the right sales leadership who trusts you and knows that if you miss one quarter or, you know, you miss one month, it's not, you're not a failure. Um, and I think yeah. also realizing that yourself internally has been big for me. Um, if you miss one month, it's not, it's not the end of the world, right? You can, double quota the next month um yeah if all of a sudden done so that's kind of one one thing that i think i've learned um especially out of 2020 right when yeah it was definitely harder to to hit those numbers unless you work at zoom but if you're not <laughs> you know if you're not a, at a communications company that makes remote life easier 2020 was definitely harder i think on on most sales individuals so. yeah absolutely and uh and hopefully 2021 is People are able to make up for it and uh, and are are hitting it hard. Um, I appreciate you coming on, Tori. Um, I'm I'm curious, just any other last thoughts that we didn't get to, and then obviously if people want to connect with you or chat with you or learn more from you, where uh, they can uh, hit you up. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, nothing nothing huge that comes to mind. Um, it's been really great having this conversation. Uh, thank you so much for the invite. Um, really appreciate it. And I'm on LinkedIn. Tori Scott at NBF and shout, Global. <laughs> and, and shout out to uh, to Paul for the intro here. Yeah, shout out to Paul. <laughs> Paul Ndazi. Good guy. <laughs> Thanks, Tori. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you everyone so much for checking out that podcast, uh, especially if you're in the middle of cleaning the dishes, mowing the lawn, uh, you know, taking a nap, whatever it is that you're doing, multitasking while you're listening to this. I appreciate you. Again, shout out to Gong, shout out to Postal. Uh, it's the last month of the quarter. Let's get after it, people. And please uh, hit me up on social media. I'm Tommy Tahoe everywhere. Uh, Tom Alamo on LinkedIn. And uh, review this podcast, subscribe, uh, show some love. Peace.